Hi guys, Barnaby for Spurred On. Welcome to part two of the video, my time at Tottenham with our first guest, Rowan Ricketts. Rowan has been incredibly insightful in the first part, so make sure you do check that out. I'm just going to ask you a few quicker, more, more quick fire questions in this second part, Rowan. So um, can you think, can you uh, think off the top of your head what your favourite moment at Spurs was? Wow. Do you know what? Obviously you could say when I scored some goals, but this is something that was touching, it was really profound for me. I played a game, I don't know if it was my last game, it could have been my last game at White Hart Lane for Spurs. I think I was playing, it might have been against Blackburn, I'm not sure, it was the end of season, after my three year stint there. And we was doing like a, not lap of honour, but it was like sure, a, yeah. a end of season, end of when season, they season say, yeah, yeah. goodbyes. And we was going around the pitch, waving to the fans, and, and we all left the pitch. But I remember when I was walking around in the section where you have the disabled um, sure, yeah. people, or the disabled section. There was these guys, and I remember this guy kind of stuck in my head. So I, I was off the, running off the pitch, and I don't know why. I, like, I was like, it was my top that I wanted to keep. Right. And I wasn't sure if I was going to come back to the club, and I said, you know what? And I ran back out, and I went to the corner, and I gave it to this guy. And I gave it to him, and, um, and the whole stadium clapped. But when I gave it to him, he couldn't really communicate with me, but I could feel yeah. what it felt. And then what it meant was, to him. Yeah, yeah, and then the stadium. So that probably was, it was bigger than the football. That, coupled with this woman that had 27 rickets on her arm. Really? Yeah, Helen, <laughs> where you at? You know what's Helen, 27 rickets, give us a shout. I, I don't know where this woman's at, but I remember she got her, my name tattooed and her arm, and I didn't, and she showed me, she's like, no, I got it down, and I was like, oh, shit. I mean, and, uh, I remember my, my, uh, my ex at the time, I don't know if she was really happy about it. <laughs> Helen, Helen was a threat yeah, at yeah. the time. Uh, that just shows how loved you were, at the very least, by Helen at that time. Uh, brings me on to my next question. You said you spent three years at the club. Um, do you feel like you would have liked to have stayed longer? And if so, what, what kind of went awry at the end you know, that, that stopped you or made you make the decision to move on? Because you moved uh, to Wolves, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I would, listen, I would have loved to have stayed in that club because it was like a team up. I, I played well for the fans. I thought that the memory that they have of me is a guy that really played well for us, but they're not sure why he left. Some of them kind of got an idea why, but sure. it was I was coming to the end of the, the contract. I had a two-year extension. Glenn Hoddle had given me, given me a call and said to me, look, Ron, come and play for play a few months on loan for me, because I wasn't playing at the time. I just came out from a little at, injury. At Wolves, because Glenn had gone on to manage Wolves by that point. Yeah, yeah at Wolves. So I went there on loan for a month or two, ripped it up, and Glenn offered me a two-year deal. And I was like, look, it's Glenn Odo who loves me, he's going to play me in my position, which is attacking central midfield. So I, I kind of, ha not had to go, but I thought, you know, I'm going to go and play for this guy. We had a formidable team that was favourites to get promoted from the championship. I went and played for Glenn and that was why I left, but I wish I had stayed on at Spurs because White Hart Lane, is just, it's, for me, it's a special place. I played there for Shamrock Rovers. Okay. Um, in the Europa Cup and going oh, I remember that. That's that's right. Yeah, that must have been brilliant to come uh, back. Ah, that was special. I remember it was the last 20 minutes. I was on the bench thinking, oh my gosh, all week it's been all about Ron Ricketts. He's come back to his <laughs> old stomping ground and I'm sitting on the bench like a mug. <laughs> and then the Michael O'Neill, who's now the guy from Northern Ireland. Yeah, doing well. Congrats, Got them to the Euros, yeah. yeah. Congrats, Michael. Um, he goes, Ron, come on, I was the last sub. I ran out there like a spring chicken on the, uh, to warm up like a kid. I was like, oh, I'm coming on. And then when I stepped on the pitch, um, it was like, it feels like, uh, I get goosebumps now thinking about it because the whole stadium stood up as if I was Teddy or as if I was someone who had played many years there. Yeah. So it shows the relationship that I had and still have with the fans. So I wish I could stay there. Ma amazing club. I yeah. love you guys. Do you know what that is? It's because Spurs, and maybe a lot of clubs like this, but I think Spurs a lot, a, a, a great deal, love young players coming up through the academy or coming up through who make it for the first team. And that's why I think um, Spurs fans are really positive about how it's going at the moment because, you know, Pochettino is bringing so many players through uh, and giving young players a chance. And I think fans just feel some kind of added allegiance to players who come up like that, you know, like Ledley did, like you did, especially after joining from, from Woolwich as well. But anyway, that leads me to my, my last question nicely. Um, you know, looking on at Spurs, from afar as a professional, you know, how do you think things have changed there now from when you were there and you know, how far can this kind of Pochettino put together squad go? You, know, you, you mentioned it earlier in the first part that you know, the, the youth team is all being brought through and, and it's looking quite good and your top six you said I think would be a good expectation but you know, in the years to come if we can keep that squad together, how far do you think it can go? I think they can do really well but like I said to you before, it's like what is success and what is doing really well, what does that really mean? And, I think if a team like Spurs 
with the philosophy that Pochettino has in terms of giving the youngsters, homegrown youngsters, an opportunity to be regulars, I think you've got to be realistic and say, you know what, top six, if you're in top four, brilliant. Yeah, amazing. That's amazing. Do you know what I mean, you're not spending silly budget. You can't compete and get the Suarez's and the no. Neymar's and the Rune. You can't compete on that level. So you've got to be realistic. So top six with those players, amazing. You're in Europe. Top six, pushing for top four. Yeah. Not top ten to scrape in top six. Do you know what I mean? So I really think, I'm, I'm a big fan of Pochettino. I had the opportunity to meet him in Toronto at Toronto FC Stadium when they played a friendly against them. What a person. Really? This guy, I've never met him in my playing career. When I was playing, he was probably playing. Yeah. Um, I was having a conversation with Lamella in Spanish outside the changing room, and Pochettino walks past. Remember, I don't know him, doesn't know me. And he stops and looks at me, and he says to me in Spanish, oh, what's your name? Where are you from? And I told him, and then he's like, so how do you speak such good Spanish? And I told him, obviously, where I am, where I played, and he's like, hey, come in here. He, this guy doesn't know me. He pulls me in the dressing room, introduces me all the backroom staff. Wow. He says, listen, whenever you want to come over to Tottenham and train ground and see what we're doing, you're welcome. Special guy. So you've got a good manager working for yeah. you. But also, put your t like, I'm a person that is fans. Don't just look at the results. I always tell fans this, because I'm a, obviously a football player, but I'm actually like a connoisseur when it comes to thinking about the whole thing. You don't got to really understand what Pochettino is doing. He's a foreign manager yeah. in England yeah. doing something that a lot of English managers don't do. He's given opportunities to these players that you have um, developed and invested your time and money into in the academy. Players like Ryan Mason. I was training with Spurs with, when Harry was there and Tim and Les three years ago. Ryan Mason was there. These were in reserves yeah, on loan. Yeah. Me all. It's Ryan Mason, Harry Kane. Townsend had played a bit. Um, Nabil Bentaleb, yeah. yeah, I've done a little uh, freestyle thing on YouTube with it. These guys were there, and I saw them, I thought, oh, these guys can play. But it takes a manager with real balls, yeah. cajonas, as yeah. they say in Spanish, to go and put these youngsters in regularly. Yeah. Everyone can bring someone on, and like Chelsea did, they bring Josh McCreckman in and throw him in. Loftus cheek. Yeah, that. shout For out one to Pochettino. Game. Amazing, amazing brilliant. guy. Rowan, that's been brilliant. Thank you so much, mate. Really appreciate that. Guys, let us know what you thought of what this amazing insight that Rowan's given us about what it's like to play at Spurs and what, it, what it's like to play as a professional football all around the world. Let us know what you think about it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV and check out Rowan's channel that is coming out your way, coming out your way uh, on YouTube soon where he'll be doing lots of FIFA gaming and football talk. And maybe he'll even invite me on his channel sometime yeah, soon. I invite so. you to come and play PlayStation with me again. All right, good man. Guys, Come on, you Spurs. How's it going, guys? It is me, Craig Mitch, and we are going to do a video for the top five Spurs pundits. Yes, this is a selection of the cream of the crop, ex-players or managers that are some way affiliated with Spurs.